What are Seattle's top gated communities? The most exclusive luxury areas where you can get in if you can afford it. We're gonna go behind the scenes and take a look at some of these luxury properties that have sold, where they're located and what it's like to live there. Now, the first one that I'm gonna highlight is the Highlands, which is in Shoreline, Washington. This is actually pretty close to where I live and some of these properties are absolutely spectacular with water views of Puget Sound, uh, large lots and large houses. Uh, I have a little bit of experience of uh, going here because some of these folks were in my, my high school. So I went to a high school, it was a private high school that attracted a lot of these people. So we'll, we'll talk about that later. So first I wanna make sure you know where the Highlands is located. And if we zoom out on our map of Seattle, you can see that the Highlands is here in the northwest part of Seattle. Uh, it's a neighborhood within the city of Shoreline. And they do actually have a gate with a guard, like you have to talk to a person. They have live security here at this place. Um, so it is very expensive and very exclusive. And I'm going back 900 days, I believe, so almost three years, and there have not been very many homes traded in this neighborhood. So uh, it tends to be a place where people, once they get in, they stay there forever. So let's look at some of these photos. So this is one of the estates. This is one of the less expensive estates. And you can just see here, uh, they tend to have big sweeping grounds, lots of mature landscaping, uh, some hills often with views. I would say uh, the vibe is fairly foresty along sort of twisting and turning roads once you get in there. And then um, some views of Lake Washington, I'm sorry, Puget Sound. Uh, so it's nice, you know, there's the tennis court, uh, there are the rhododendrons. It's a great property. The, the neighborhood, you know, the properties are getting a little bit older now. And so again, you know, if people have been living in here for 30 years, 50 years, we might see some that are fairly dated, but uh, it's lovely and it's a great location within Seattle. Uh, this home was built, let's see, this home was built in 1981 and it's got almost a two acre estate. So that's larger than we'd see uh, in most places in Seattle, four bedrooms, 7,000 square foot home and this let's take a look this sold in five days back in 2021. this one took a little bit longer to sell it sold for about 3.5 million again you know we see the large grassy estate we see the trees and then uh, a beautiful more modern interior i would say perhaps professionally designed uh, but then i mean the kitchen doesn't read well. <laughs> I feel like the whole kitchen would need to be remodeled and then depending on these paint colors, you might need to do some other work as well. But overall, this is 7,000 square feet, a nine bathroom home. So uh, again, you know, second kitchen here. A lot of what you're paying for is the location. It looks like they might have a little sauna down here. Uh, the acreage, one and a half acres, and you're paying to get into the neighborhood. You actually have to pay $25,000 and go through an application. They have like a criminal background check to get into the neighborhood as well. And then you're gonna be looking at HOA dues upwards of, uh, the last one we looked at was $1,300 a month. This is $1,800 a month. So there's certainly a cost of admission just to be considered for this area. This one sneaked in. This is not in the Highlands. This is in Innes Arden, which is um, another HOA protected area north of the Highlands uh, with some other wonderful properties. And you can see, uh, it looks like we're waterfront here, but a lot of our waterfront is, is cliff and bluff. So you're not actually getting a sandy beach, even if you do make it over to the coast. Okay, so here we have an amazing six acre estate in the Highlands and just beautiful modern architecture with this reflecting pond here, uh, outdoor covered spaces. I mean, this almost looks like a, a premier hotel. Uh, very fancy, very woodsy, minimalist, and fabulous if you like this style. Impressive in any event, a lot of stone. I don't love stone here in the Pacific Northwest. It tends to be cold. Uh, cold to the touch unless you have radiant heating or something under the floors. 
but it's going to carry a lot of that feeling of damp, cool air that we tend to get uh, toward the ocean. Uh, beautiful zero horizon pool there. Uh, glassed in areas, covered outdoor areas make a lot of sense, especially if you want to have outdoor furniture. Uh, it is going to be rainy and uh, keeping that furniture clean is a big plus. So this is a 7,000 square foot home on six acres. It's priced at $7 million and it's sold in two months. And your HOAs here are $2,500 a month. So that was it. We only had a few homes in the Highlands within the last couple years to transact. Here's another one. Now we're going farther back. We're beyond uh, 900 days out. So here's an older home. Uh, beautiful hardwood floors, nice windows, traditional architecture, beautiful fireplace. Uh, so lovely home. Oh my goodness, this kitchen needs a total remodel. So dated for sure, but um, you know, it's only two and a half million. Uh, and this was on the market, it looks like almost more than a year here. So that one took a while to sell, three and a half acres. 7,000 square feet. This next one took 543 days to sell. So with these luxury homes, they don't, they just don't trade as much or as easily. They can be harder to value. Um, they're certainly waiting for the right buyer. And depending on the finishes that you have, um, the level of investment in the property in recent decades, are we using it for entertaining, for corporate purposes, for family purposes? Uh, can make a big difference. So that's another affordable one, two and a half million. Uh, some beautiful water here. This one looks like a, a private transaction, didn't actually go on the market. A broker might have known the buyer ahead of time or something. Here's another nice one with a pool and more modern architecture. I really like these uh, high transom windows, the glass doors. Uh, bringing the outside in with this wall of windows is a really nice Pacific Northwest feature. Um, giant bookcases, dream feature of mine, very modern uh, appliances here, double stove, a uh, huge vent. You could cook for a, a large group in this place. Uh, nice cherry trees blossoming on the lawn. And I'm not seeing a view. It doesn't look like they have much of a view from this property. This one went for three and a half million. It's 11,000 square feet. This looks like an old English estate, doesn't it? Fancy molding and ceiling accents here. More old fashioned style. Uh, portrait gallery, wallpaper. Uh, very distinctive, obviously elegant. I love this library. Uh, well, the built-in bookcases. Obviously, you'll you'll need to do your own decor if the, the decor doesn't agree with you, but you can see what kind of views are available. I would say views, but not necessarily A-plus views and certainly not from every lot, but having the privacy, the uh, nice landscaping, the classy neighborhood, uh, definitely a big plus, a big part of the reason to be here. This one went for three and a half million. And remember, 25000 to get in. So the Highlands is located here in Shoreline on the west side by the ocean uh, between uh, essentially 145th and 175th. So this is kind of the area where that private neighborhood is. There are 107 homes there. They're all expensive. You know, 2 million, 7 million uh, are the kind of the price ranges that we've seen, the bookends of homes we've seen transact in the last uh, five years or so. But again, not very many sales, not very many homes turning over here. This tends to be the place that you live until you die. <laughs> there are uh, families with children here. And in my experience, uh, a lot of them went to private schools. So I went to a private school called Lakeside. Uh, this is the website. And this is on 145th and I-5, so very close to the Highlands and a very good, very well-rated school. Uh, it costs something like $40,000 a year now to go here, so uh, there's definitely a cost of entry. But, you know, Bill Gates went here, his kids went here, people from the Nordstrom family, the Macaw Cellular family, uh, Ben Arroyo family, a lot of the, the big names, the who's who in Seattle business. Uh, have sent their kids here, so it's a great place to meet people. Although in my personal experience, I was a great student, 
as a varsity athlete, um, I did feel that there was some division between, um, I, I would say maybe like clickishness or just those people from the Highlands already knew each other. It wasn't necessarily a seamless blending of people from, from the different neighborhoods. So um, I know now they're focusing a lot on um, financial aid and getting people into the sports programs and that type of thing. So I haven't, I haven't been there for, you know, whenever since I graduated, I think I went to a couple of the reunions, but I'm not up to speed on the current vibe of the school. Just wanted to let you know that that was a good school available in the area um, and highly leaned on by the Highlands community uh, children from what I can see. And they have both a high school and a middle school that's uh, kind of fifth grade to eighth and then the high school is ninth through twelfth and the highlands itself again is in the shoreline neighborhood which is well rated this is niche.com uh, so shoreline gets an a in a lot of categories here uh, there's plenty of shopping uh, it has good access to downtown seattle it's outside of the city of seattle so that can be great from a tax perspective as well I like uh, Shoreline a lot. I've lived here all my life um, and the, high, the Highlands are definitely our premier best regarded gated community. Uh, very expensive, very prestigious, uh, somewhat isolated and beautiful large lots, many of which have a view uh, and some wonderful huge homes as well. Okay, the next gated community in Seattle that I want to share with you is the community of Broadmoor. Take a look at the beautiful Broadmoor Golf Course. This is a location that is fabulous. I will show it to you in a minute, but uh, the whole neighborhood HOA is built in between this beautiful golf course and the beautiful Arboretum in uh, Seattle, just near the University of Washington. Let's take a look at it on the map. So here you can see this little square and the red homes uh, in Broadmoor. And if we zoom in a little bit, well, first of all, you can see how close it is to downtown Seattle. We're on the, the downtown side, um, you know, just actually pretty close to Capitol Hill down by the water. So we're right by the 520 bridge and uh, you have Great Lake Washington views through here. And uh, if we zoom in a little bit more, you're gonna see the Arboretum, which is a huge property, I believe it's owned, uh, or at least facilitated by the University of Washington. And then over here we have the golf course. So it's very private within a lot of green space. Um, here, different from the Highlands, I would say you don't have as many large lots and there tends to be a little bit more turnover. But the name of the game here in this area is the access to downtown Seattle, as well as the access to the University of Washington, which is right here. And in this area, we have some other premium neighborhoods like Laurelhurst and Windermere, uh, which are not gated, but are certainly expensive, exclusive Lake Washington type areas, Lake Washington view areas. So let's take a look at some of these homes. Okay, so here in Broadmoor, we're looking at homes that have sold in the last couple of years. And, uh, you know, I'm only seeing 16. So there's not a lot of turnover here either. The price of entry to get in here is pretty much two and a half million and up as of this video. And you're gonna have bigger homes, but not necessarily bigger lots because we're so close to the city. Uh, we're in a, a fairly urban surrounding area and we're on the golf course. We're getting more um, suburb sized homes rather than some of the big acreage estates that we were seeing in the Highlands neighborhood. So taking a look here, I mean, you can even see other properties in the back, but certainly a beautiful Tudor style home, uh, lovely accents, hardwood floors, uh, nice trim on the walls and doorways, uh, leaded glass windows, and some uh, charming architect architectural touches, very nice landscaping, but not the huge properties that we were seeing before. This is $4,000. And on these homes, to get into this area, they're charging you about half a point for their um, HOA fee to get in. So you remember the Highlands had a $25,000 fee. Here, uh, they're charging uh, not 1%, but about half 1%. It's 0.41 six, seven percent or something like that. So uh, on a two and a half million dollar property that equates to about ten thousand dollars. 
Uh, here's another one we can take a look at. Brick exterior, uh, nice built-in bookcases and hardwood floors. Lots of yellow paint to lighten it up. When I see that in Seattle, I often think they're trying to bring a little bit of sunshine in. Uh, nice wall of windows here, highlighting the yard. Got a little greenhouse in the corner, a nice patio, and they're using hedges for screening. You can see the gates here of Broadmoor. So this is the gatehouse at Broadmoor. You can see how what a nice job they do with their planting and their landscaping. And this is gonna be an entrance that people use to access the golf course, as well as the residences um, and the golf course was established in 1927 and they have uh, its members by invitation only. So you have to know somebody, you can't wear jeans, you know, there's a strict dress code. They're trying to maintain the vibe of uh, prestigious, exclusive. Uh, here's another nice Broadmoor home, three bedroom, two bath, nice kitchen. Oh, this looks okay. This doesn't look amazing to me. Uh, 2,200 square feet sold in three days for $2.7 million. Here's a bigger one, 4,380 square feet, red Spanish tile roof. Here's a great overview. Uh, you can see the golf course. Uh, you can see how they've landscaped and kind of screened off their yard for privacy, but overall the homes are fairly close together. There's Lake Washington. This is great to get an idea of what Broadmoor looks like. So there's going to be a lot more contact with the neighbors here than in the Highlands. At least, you know, visual contact. This house sold for a little over three million. It's uh, less than a fifth of an acre. Nice architectural detail here with the beams and the ceiling. Balconies, tile flooring back there. So interesting, a different look on the inside. That one sold in 236 days. So they kept their price high and waited until the market came to them. They sold it in the spring in May, which is pretty much uh, the peak of our, our market. So here in Broadmoor, you're gonna have a lot of doctors, you're gonna have executives, people working downtown, people working at the hospitals, people working at the University of Washington. Um, I did go out to a wonderful dinner through my, again, my private high school. I met a lot of these folks uh, whose kids were coming to the school. So uh, one of the gentlemen that I went out with, with the school dance, uh, was very nice. He was from this neighborhood. And I remember his dad had a membership to the Columbia Tower Club in downtown Seattle, which is the tallest building in downtown Seattle. And at the top floor, they have a nice restaurant. I ran into a uh, Seattle famous glass artist named Dale Chihuly in the elevator and um, had a wonderful lobster dinner there. <laughs> Thanks, Dad! It was a great time. And so again, you know, this is charming, quaint, luxurious, not overly ostentatious, a great location, great golf course community. It's a good way to meet uh, folks who are living here in the area. Uh, the homeowner's dues only $165 per month. You do have that buy-in fee to get in, and I'm sure if you join the golf club, there's an additional fee associated with that. So we won't look through all of these, but you can kind of see prices are going up. Here's something for four million right on the golf course fairway there, it looks like. So this is a five bedroom, five bath, great view, bigger kitchen nice modern finishes still you know less than a fifth of an acre for their lot size and going up you know here's something that sold for four million in just three days uh, they had four thousand square feet they had about a third of an acre for this one so a larger lot and the most expensive here in the last couple years was five million you can take a look at that lovely gravel outdoor spaces professionally designed interiors, nice windows, oh, a little bit of a view maybe over here, a little bit, I don't see any water, but somebody wanted it, it got snapped up in two days and it went over list price, which implies that there were multiple uh, interested parties on this one. Yep, and I know the agent who sold this, she's actually the mom 
of one of the Lakeside kids that I went to school with and she lives in the Highlands. So she knows a lot of the people who are kind of uh, flowing in these social circles here. So the Highlands and Broadmoor are Seattle's two big ultra exclusive gated communities. Now I wanna shift a little bit here and talk to you about where some other locations are that you may be able to find a similar exquisite type of property even if it's not within a gated community. I will highlight the Innes Arden uh, Homeowners Association area of uh, Shoreline, Washington. It's not a gated community per se, uh, because there's no gate, you can freely drive into it, but it is an exclusive and expensive Homeowners Association protected neighborhood, uh, very close to the Highlands, actually close to Richmond Beach on 185th, um, north of downtown Seattle and on the on the Puget Sound. So we have some lovely properties over there, uh, as well as to the north in Woodway and Edmonds. Uh, very far north, you can get to the Mill Creek Country Club, which is a golf course country club where you'll be able to um, join and golf and also see some beautiful homes for sale. Uh, in addition, there's a similar setup with a golf course and beautiful homes with views in Mukilteo. Now, if you want to go ultra expensive and ultra exclusive, come take a look at the map with me here. Uh, this is a map of Seattle homes that have sold in the last 100 days, just to kind of make sure we don't have too many red dots. And the price cutoff here is two and a half million and up. So you can see we have uh, one home here in the Innes Arden area. And then um, this would be the Broadmoor area. This is the Laurelhurst area. And so what we're finding is that those are gonna be concentrated around our waterways, either Puget Sound, Lake Washington, and Lake Sammamish, with an emphasis toward being close in proximity toward downtown Bellevue, as well as downtown Seattle. We have two bridges crossing the lake, which make access there easy. Um, ultra exclusive areas are right here in Medina, Clyde Hill, Yarrow Point. Uh, this is the vicinity where Bill Gates, Bill Gates built his famous $40 million mansion. Uh, we also have Mercer Island, which has excellent, excellent schools and is very well known for being um, a high end exclusive area, kind of a 2 million and up to be here. Uh, and then as we expand out, we're seeing more toward this uh, Union Hill, Novelty Hill area in Redmond, uh, Redmond being where the Microsoft campus is. And then down here, just south of I-5, we're starting to see more development actually in this area, um, Newcastle and out toward Maple Valley. So again, these homes, uh, I guess, are three million and up. Let's go to something a little higher uh, and give ourselves a little bit more time to see eight million dollars and up. So again, we're going to be looking right here in this uh, Mercer Island, uh, Clyde Hill, Yarrow Point, Medina area, as well as close to Lake Washington. And let's see, I'm just curious what we've got right here in the middle of town. That uh, looks like an acre and a half in Windermere. So Windermere is near the University of Washington, near Seattle Children's Hospital. Uh, my grandparents built their house here in the post-war era after World War II. Uh, the mayor of Seattle had a home here. The Far Side comic had a, a home here. Bill Gates's parents had a home here. Uh, and they do have a little beach waterfront club uh, that HOA members can join. It's not gated, but it is a lovely area. Um, close to 520 and similar to uh, the Laurelhurst neighborhood, which is adjacent. So if you're hungry for more, I've got some driving tours of the Medina area as well as Windermere. I'll let you click around and go to the next video now so you can keep watching and see what some of these homes are actually like out on the streets. If you have any questions, I am a real estate agent in this area, always happy to help you find your luxury or regular home for sale if you're relocating to this area or just have questions about some of the neighborhoods. Try to be a matchmaker and help you find the place where you're gonna be happy long-term and meet your other goals with your home purchase. You can reach me on my website, homeproassociates.com, and I'll look forward to seeing you on the next video.